Hey everybody, in this video I'll be taking a look at the Chronomancer spells for Frostgrave 2nd edition and comparing those spells to their 1st edition versions. Hey everybody, I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, the channel that plays tabletop games using toy bricks and blocks and discusses the rules and the strategies that build the foundation for those games. Be sure to check the description box below for timestamps, uh, links to some of our other Frostgrave content, and the link to the PDF from Osprey Games that explains all the spells for Frostgrave 2nd edition. This video does assume that the viewer has at least some familiarity with either the 1st or the 2nd edition of Frostgrave, and it's also part of a 10 video series where I'll be taking a look at each School of Wizardry from Frostgrave 2nd Edition and discussing removed spells, slightly changed or overhauled spells, new spells, and my personal opinions about the changes. In the 1st Edition, Chronomancers seem to have a lot of overcosted and unreliable spells, one of which looked really powerful at first glance, but proved to be a bit of a head-scratcher, at least in my opinion and the Chronomancers didn't seem to harness the powers of time to their fullest potential. So now let's take a look at the bricks and the blocks of the Chronomancer spells from the second edition. All eight first edition spells make a return here in the second edition, though there are some important changes to a few of them. We'll start by taking a look at Fleet Feet. This spell imbues a figure with speed and increases their movement. Maximum line of sight for all spells in 2nd edition have been reduced to 24 inches, but otherwise, this spell is worded exactly the same as its 1st edition version, and is a great spell to cast on a soldier that's weighed down by either heavy armor or from carrying a treasure. Crumble ages a small section of the ruins, causing it to collapse. It still works the same, except if it destroys the floor beneath a figure, now they do a move roll with a target number of 22 instead of a will roll against the casting number as before. It states that if you cast this spell on a structure where a wizard eye has been cast, it will effectively cancel that spell. Also, if you cast this on a wall spell that has popped up on the board, it will completely cancel that as well. Decay causes a non-magical weapon to rust or rot away. It works the same as before, but it clarifies it has no effect on figures not carrying weapons. Since this spell can't destroy magic weapons, I think it shines best early in a campaign, before soldiers have had a chance to find any magical equipment. And the spell works especially well against ranged soldiers to take out their bows and crossbows. Slow affects the passage of time for the target, limiting them to only one action per activation. The casting number has been reduced from 12 to 10. The figure is still allowed a will roll to cancel the effects after each of their activations. However, they're no longer allowed an immediate will roll. So if you successfully cast it, they'll be affected by this spell for at least one turn no matter what. These changes and the new rules that all will rolls to resist spells require at least a 14 greatly increases the viability of this spell and the spell Petrify which freezes the target solid, and they're unable to carry out any actions on their next activation. This spell has also had its casting number reduced from 12 to 10, and now the target also suffers a minus three fight penalty to a minimum of plus zero. The target still gets an immediate will roll to resist the spell, but it's noted that large creatures now get a plus eight to their roll, as their strength allows them to more easily fight through the petrification. It's also noted that figures affected by this spell can't have leap cast on them as their solid encasing must be weighing them down, but it appears they can still be affected by other magical movement, like the new spell's suggestion or blink. So just like the slow spell, the changes to petrify have greatly increased its usefulness. Fast act briefly hastens a figure's movements. In 1st edition, this spell allowed the target to have its activation before any other figure on the following turn. Now, the target activates at the end of the player's current phase instead, and it can target one of your warband members or an uncontrolled figure. And it states the spell can't be cast on the spellcaster themselves or any figure that has already activated on that turn. A problem I had with the original version of this spell 
was that often the character I cast this on, by the time the next turn came around, they were either not in a good position to do much or they were dead. So I think that the new version should open up some new options for how to use the spell. And I think that the name kind of matches the function a little better than it did before. Now to the spell that was a head scratcher to me in the first edition, Time Walk. This spell allows the caster to shift through time. Before, it seemed like something was missing from this spell. It had a crazy casting number of 18, and failing to cast the spell caused two additional damage to the caster. And all it did was allow them to activate again in the soldier phase. So you basically spend your action, risk a bunch of damage to hopefully cast a spell instead in the soldier phase and get a little bit of extra movement. The only time this seemed useful was if you needed to stall your activation, but that's such a corner case situation that I just could never see the justification for taking this spell. Now with the spell, the casting number has been reduced by 4 to 14, and only the wizard can cast the spell. Its function now allows the wizard to activate again in the apprentice phase and the soldier phase, though only one action is allowed for each of those activations. These two bonus actions can be any action you want. No movement is required with one of them. Though if they do move, their movement is reduced by half if they've already moved as normal. The wizard cannot activate any other soldiers with them during these special activations, nor can they participate in a group activation. Also, if the caster uses this two turns in a row, they now suffer eight points of damage, though the automatic two points of damage for failing has been removed from the wording. I think this spell in its new form could prove to be quite powerful, but just keep in mind as you're leveling up your abilities and lowering your casting numbers, that this spell is dead to your apprentice as it's only usable by your wizard. Now for Time Store. This spell captures a fragment of the caster's present time to store for later. This spell works basically the same and it's still quite costly to use. It has a high casting number of 14 and requires you to forfeit your second action if you successfully cast it. And if you are successful, you can store one action to be used during a later activation. If I'm reading both this spell and Time Walk correctly, there's no longer a restriction that you can't use the two spells in combination. It's clarified the action this spell grants must be taken during the spellcaster's activation. And I think this is just to clarify you can't randomly use a stored action in the creature phase or something. But I could see it implying it can only be used during the spellcaster's normal activation. If I get an answer one way or the other, I'll be sure to include that in the comments below. But regardless of whether this spell can be used with Time Walk or not, it still has the potential to be quite powerful if you've got some good spells to double up with on a later turn. I would say I'm satisfied with these changes. With Petrify and Slow, both of these spells felt kind of unusable in the first edition, but now they've both had their casting costs reduced, Petrify has a secondary ability to reduce its target's fight skill, and slow now no longer allows an immediate will roll, which make both of those spells better. Decay, Crumble, and Fleet Feet all work basically the same and still serve their functions quite well. Fast Act is still pretty good in its new form, and I think the spell still shines when you cast it on a captain who can group activate with another soldier, essentially doubling the benefit of the spell. Time Store can still be a good option to give you some extra actions later in the game, and the changes to Time Walk would make what I consider to be the worst spell from first edition into something that's interesting and I think better captures the intent that the author had with the original spell. I think the changes to the Chronomancer spells will make the Chronomancer easier to build and will also give more options to wizards that are choosing neutral or aligned spells from the Chronomancer school. And those are the second edition Chronomancer spells. If I missed a change or got something wrong, let me and the community know in the details below, as my goal with these videos is to create an accurate resource for the Frostgrave community. I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to click like, add a comment, or subscribe so you can keep up with all the content that we're releasing. 
And with that, I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, and I'll see you on the next video.